Welcome to the Philippines' premier motor show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a sports sedan from Kia, the Stinger 3.3 Twin Turbo GT, and a luxury mid-size SUV from Mercedes-Benz, the GLE 300D. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we have the 2021 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray and the 2021 David Brown Speedback GT. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mid-size SUVs, the Mitsubishi Montero Sport versus the Sangyong Rexton. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the installation and tuning of Unichip, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry. We shall have the launch of the new Geely Okavango variant as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Kia. In a world now seemingly dominated by crossovers and SUVs, is there still a market for a rear-wheel drive 5-seater 4-door fastback? That is what we have in this edition of Car Review, the Kia Stinger 3.3 Twin Turbo GT. So you want a four-door sedan that can seat four or even five comfortably in a luxuriously appointed cabin, but can also provide the high-performance driving experience that only powerful rear-wheel drive cars allow. And maybe the Kia Stinger 3.3 Twin Turbo GT is for you. Taking up space that's 4,830 millimeters long, 1,870 millimeters at its widest point, and just 1,400 millimeters at its highest. The Stinger features the low sloping rear line and longish hood and the silhouette of a typical fastback or liftback. It sits low on the ground, just 130 mm gap to street level. With the Stinger, he is venturing into muscle car territory which may spark some debate from purists among car enthusiasts. But there shouldn't be any argument that it deserves the GT or Gran Turismo label from looks to performance. The Stinger is unmistakably a Kia with the signature Tiger grille. It has a muscular stance and a long 2,905mm wheelbase. It's got a wider track in the rear than the front, which speaks volumes of its sports car performance intentions. The signature 19-inch alloy wheels look especially cool and sporty with the Brembo disc brakes, advertising themselves, four piston calipers with 13.8-inch discs in the front, and two piston calipers with 13.4-inch discs in the rear. The wheels are wrapped by low-profile tires, wider in the rear than the front, 25535R19s to 22540R19s. 
The Stinger exterior elements blends the latest functionality with sporty elegant styling. These include among others, the bifunction projection LED headlamps with dynamic bending, LED daytime running lights, dark chrome coated side view mirrors that adjust and fold electronically, are heated and come with puddle lights and integrated turn signals, and the aero rain sensing windshield wiper. Also adding to sporty and elegant functionality in the Stinger are rear spoilers with high mount LED stop lamp, LED rear combination lights, dark chrome quad exhaust pipes. Adding more than a touch of sport to the Stinger are the air curtain and aero fender garnish integrated onto the front bumper design and the rear integrated diffuser. The elegant sporty styling with high-tech functionality is carried over into the Stinger cabin which one gets into using the smart entry system. These low-slung leather seats with the oversized hide cushions hug driver and front seat passenger and should keep them in place in spirited driving. Aside from 8-way power adjustment, the driver and front seat passenger benefits from 4-way lumbar support and cooling and heating function. The cabin features aluminum trim on the dashboard. The instrumentation features standard tachometer and speedometer as well as a 7-inch multifunction display. Quite notable are the aircraft-inspired front air vents for the Dual Zone Automatic Air Conditioning System, which also comes with rear air vents. The shift knob and the tilt and telescopic three-spoke steering wheel are both wrapped in leather, with the steering wheel featuring added functions. Among other Stinger interior features are power windows, central door locks, electronic parking brake with auto hold. The infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen, AM, FM radio, CD, and MP3 player, both USB and aux imports, Bluetooth, voice recognition, as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Harman Kardon speakers, and mobile phone wireless charging. The 3,342cc V6 gasoline engine with twin turbochargers and dual CVVT generates 510 Nm of torque from 1,300 to 4,500 rpm. He claims a V6 engine that is mated to an 8-speed automatic shift by wire transmission can motivate the Stinger from 0 to 100 kph in 4.9 seconds. Top speed of the rear-wheel drive Stinger with its limited slip differential is placed at 270 kph. Drivers can choose from 5 drive modes using the round dial of the console depending on mood or circumstance. The Stinger suspension features front McPherson struts and stabilizer and multi-link system in the rear and comes with electronically controlled damping force. Kia also injected the Stinger with the latest driver assistance and safety technologies and systems. These include auto cruise control, blind spot detection, 360 degree around view monitoring system, and front and rear parking distance sensors. Included for safety are 3-point ELR seatbelts with pre-tensioner for 4 plus 2-point static seatbelts for the middle passenger in the second row. Isofix child anchor for rear seats, child lock, and front side curtain and driver knee airbags. Standard safety features in the stair include anti-lock braking system, electronic stability control, no start assist control, anti-theft system, and tire pressure monitoring system. Kia says the Stinger has been designed and engineered to provide both high performance and supreme comfort to meet and surpass standards attached to the GT or Gran Turismo cars, those meant for both long and spirited driving. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Montero Sport. Elevate your journey. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. I think my 
dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. Ford Philippines has rolled out a refreshed Ranger lineup with new exterior designs and features, as well as upgraded interior amenities aimed at buyers looking to live the Ranger life. The new Rangers sport different design elements and features distinguishing the variants from XLS to the XLT and the Wild Track but all present a bolder and tougher stance on the road while delivering on the promise of functionality and capability that meet diverse needs and lifestyle of the Ford Ranger owner. The refresh Ranger comes in 13 variants to meet all possible budgets, wants, and needs of buyers from the 1.062 million peso Ranger, 2.2L XLS 4x2 manual, to the 1.998 million peso Ranger 2-liter bi-turbo Raptor 4x4 automatic. P.K. Umashankar, President and Managing Director of Ford Philippines, says, Our new Ford Ranger lineup will allow us to continue building on our leadership in the pickup segment in the country. Supporting the launch of the Refresh Ranger is the Live the Ranger Life brand campaign, focusing on who Ford targets as its buyers. According to Ford's new Live the Ranger Life philosophy, Ranger buyers live the following values. When meeting challenges, Ranger buyers go up and over instead of going around them. Ranger owners can't help but help. People are communities in need. Those who drive Rangers seek their own paths in life, and where there isn't a path, carve one. Ranger owners want to share their success with others and to bring others along the journey. And Ranger owners enjoy life and love, saying, we make our own fun. Can an award-winning Isuzu dealership become even better? After winning the 2019 Dealer of the Year Award, or DOYA, and attaining excellence in DOYA sales operations distinction two years running, for 2018 and 2019, Isuzu Pasig has built a bigger facility with an added Isuzu Pasig Truck Center. The new Isuzu Pasig dealership and Isuzu Pasig Truck Center is now formally open following a simple ribbon-cutting ceremony attended by Isuzu Philippines Corporation President Hajime Koso, Executive Vice President Shujiro Sakoda, and Sales Division Head Joseph Bautista, AC Motors President Antonio Zara, and Isuzu Automotive Dealership Inc. Chief Operating Officer Alex Pagio, and Isuzu Pasig Operations Manager Eric Pombanco. At the ribbon-cutting ceremony, Koso said, With our continuing goal to strengthen and widen the services of Isuzu to our valued customers, IPC is aggressively expanding our dealership network. And I am proud to say that the IADI was among those who took the initiative to construct a bigger and more modern facility that is complemented by a truck center. The Isuzu Pasig dealership and Isuzu Pasig truck center occupy a combined floor area of 5,000 square meters and boast a five-vehicle display showroom. The dealership features three periodic maintenance service bays with lifters to accommodate light commercial vehicles or LCVs and light-duty trucks, while the truck center has eight bays with lifters, two bays for trucks and a wheel alignment bay for LCVs, as well as 11 tinsmith prep bays and two paint booths for body repairs. The newly inaugurated dealership and truck center are located along E. Rodriguez Jr. Avenue at the corner of Cali Industria and Barangay Bagumbayan in Quezon City. Toyota Motors Philippines has rolled out the newly updated Innova, which the Japanese brand automaker wants all to know is proudly assembled in Santa Rosa, Laguna. The latest makeover allows Toyota to say the Innova now looks sportier, more dynamic. And the updates for comfort, convenience, and connectivity allow Toyota to say they make the well-loved MPV safer, sportier, and even more capable to take on daily mobility needs, whether for practical use or for family leisure. The new Innova lineup has six variants from the J Manual priced at 1.186 million pesos to the top of the line V Automatic at 1.739 million pesos. The Innova V Automatic, of course, gets all the latest gugaos and more of the good stuff, but all variants got all the things that matter. Enough to say Toyota's signature quality, durability, and reliability, as well as great value, are found in every Innova unit. 
But Toyota did not lead with all the new details and specs like the reliable 2.8 liter diesel engine and available drive modes which are Eco and Power or the easy ingress with push start and smart entry for the V variant and ease of access for smartphone applications with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility for V, G and E variants. Instead, the launch started with talk about creating new memories and sharing stories with the 2021 update of the best-selling multi-purpose vehicle and about the Innova's rich heritage of being the preferred MPV of generations of Filipino families that started with the Tamaro FX and then the Revo. Toyota is leveraging on its long-standing relationship with Filipinos, its leadership of the local auto industry to continue to dominate the MPV and other segments of the auto industry. Reaching up to 240,000 proud Innova owners to date and catering to a wide range of needs and preferences of Filipino families and drivers, the Innova indeed raises the flag and symbolizes excellence in the local manufacturing industry, said Toyota Motor Philippines' first vice president for marketing, Sherwin Chua Lim. The Honda Accord and Honda City won four awards at the ASEAN New Car Assessment Program or NCAP Grand Prix Awards 2020. The 10th generation Honda Accord won three awards in the Best Safety Performance Overall Award for getting highest score in the assessment for Adult Occupant Protection and for Child Occupant Protection. The 5th generation Honda City received the ASEAN NCAP Excellence Award Consistent 5-star citation for attaining a 5-star safety rating in three successive generations. Following its ASEAN debut, first in Thailand in 2019, the 10th Generation Accord has won several awards in various countries, including Best Safety Features, Mid-Size Sedan Category at our very own Autofocus People's and Media's Choice Awards 2020, Best Mid-Size Sedan Under 2000cc at the Car of the Year 2019 in Thailand, and Executive Sedan of the Year at the Carless.my People's Choice Award 2019 in Malaysia. Honda said the latest awards for the Accord and the city emphasized a strong commitment to safety and its vision to realize a collision-free mobile society. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature to feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. In this edition of Head to Head, we pit two mid-size SUVs, the Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4 Automatic against the Sangyong Rexton 4x4 Automatic in a spec-to-spec -spec compare. When you ask Filipinos what is their dream family car, chances are the answer would be roomy 7-seater SUVs. While not many can immediately afford one, it is the type of vehicle that becomes the aim for upgrade as family incomes rises. There are now a lot of 7-seater SUVs in the market, let's take a look at two worthy options. One is a perennial favorite looking to leverage its popularity in order to reclaim market leadership in the segment, the 2020 Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4 Automatic. 
The other carries a major Korean mark, known for producing premium SUVs, but has yet to gain traction in the local market, the 2019 Sangyong Rexton 2.2 liter 4x4 automatic. The Montero Sport GT 4x4 is 4,785mm long, 1,815 millimeters wide, and 1,805mm tall, with its 218mm minimum ground clearance. The exterior bears the distinctive Mitsubishi Defense Shield grille design, and features LED headlamps with daytime running lights and auto-leveling function, large combination turn signals, and fog lamps. The LED rear combination lamp design and the 18-inch two-tone six-spoke alloy wheels. It also comes with rain-sensing front wipers and power lift tailgate with hands-free function. The Rexon 4x4 is 4,850mm long, 1,960mm wide, and 1,800mm tall, and a 224mm minimum ground clearance. Exterior features include LED headlamps with DRL and manual leveling function, LED fog lamps with integrated cornering lamps, heated power folding and adjusting side view mirrors with integrated turn signals. Rear spoiler in high mount stop lamp. The Rexton 4x4 also comes with chrome 20 inch alloy rims wrapped by 25550 R20 tires. Inside the roomy Montero Sport cabin are three rows of seats upholstered in premium leather. Dominating the dashboard is a large 8 inch full LCD instrument cluster that provides info on car function as well as the advanced driver's assistant features. For comfort and convenience are keyless and key system with start stop engine button dual-zone automatic climate control system, and adaptive cruise control. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features controls for the LCD instrument cluster and the multimedia audio system, which comes with an 8-inch display screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. It also comes with USB ports, 12-volt sockets, and 220-volt power outlet. The Rexon 4x4 sits 7 with 2 plus 3 plus 2 configuration on seats upholstered in leather to match the door trim. Comfort and convenience features include smart keyless entry, tilt and telescopic steering wheel with paddle shifters, push start button, power windows, parking sensors complemented by reverse cameras, automatic headlights, dual zone climate control with second row AC vents, heated and ventilated power seats, 8 ways for driver, and 6 way for front seat passenger. The onboard entertainment system features touchscreen display, auxiliary jack, USB and Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Andrew Auto, and 6 speakers. The Montero Sport GT 4x4 is powered by a 2.4-liter inline 4-cylinder diesel engine with variable geometry turbo and the Mitsubishi Innovative Valve Timing Electronic Control that generates 181 PS at 3,500 revolutions per minute and 430 Nm of torque at 2,500 RPM. Its 4-wheel drive system comes with an 8-speed automatic transmission with sports mode and Mitsubishi Super Select 4-wheel drive 2 with off-road traction control. The Montero Sport suspension system uses double wishbone with coil springs and stabilizer bar in front and three-link coil springs with stabilizer bar in the rear. The Rexon 4x4 is powered by a 4-cylinder 2,157cc DOHC 16-valve turbocharged and intercooled diesel engine with CRDI, generating a max 181 PS at 4,000 RPM and a max 420 Nm of torque at 1,600 to 2,600 RPM. The 4x4 drivetrain uses a 7-speed automatic transmission. The Rexon suspension features double wishbones in front and 5-link system in the rear. Mitsubishi filled the top of the line Montero with active and passive safety features as well as state-of-the-art driver assist technology. These include active stability control, low start assist, trailer stability assist, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, hill descent control, Blind spot warning with lane change assist, ultrasonic miss acceleration mitigation system, and rear cross traffic alert. The Montero Sport GT 4x4 also features multi around monitor with cameras and sensors for safe parking. Other safety features include 7 SRS airbags, 3 point seat belts for all 7 occupants in vehicle, ISOFIX, and tether anchors. The Rexon 4x4 also comes with a lot of safety features and driver assist technology including anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, stability control, traction control, hill start assist, hill descent control, driver airbag, passenger airbag, front curtain airbags. Automotive companies seem to be rolling out seven-seater SUVs 
with state-of-the-art comfort and convenience features, infotainment systems with smart connectivity, the latest in safety and driver assist technologies as standard equipment. Buyers can thank Stiff Competition for this. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions the WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's pure automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Local automobile companies are learning to live with the COVID-19 pandemic and are now starting to host events live and in person. Among the first to do so is Geely Philippines, which hosted a Chinese New Year come Thanksgiving lunch for media with a special vehicle unveiling as a side event, or perhaps is the unveiling that's the main event. Geely Philippines launched a new special variant of the Okavango during a Chinese New Year launch for select members of media. It's the first event held live and in-person for Geely Philippines, and with an abundance of caution, guests invited to the special Chinese New Year launch were requested to undergo swab testing for COVID-19. Of course, the testing was gratis con amore, it is after all the love month. Geely Philippines said the event was also in thanksgiving for media, helping the company successfully launch vehicles in a difficult 2020. Today, we invited uh, some media personnel for a lunch, a Thanksgiving lunch, and then actually a reveal of the Okabango's new variant, which is the Urban Plus. Geely has much more to celebrate and be thankful for in 2020 when the COVID-19 stopped the world from spinning for a time, so to speak. Geely sold a total of 2,158 units even while just offering essentially just three models, the Cool Ray, Azcara, and the Okavango, and in some months, the Geely vehicle's top segments. Geely is looking to leverage the momentum for a growth gained in the last quarter of the year by introducing a special variant of the Okavango. This is the Okavango Urban Plus, which Geely describes as wonderfully distinct even more. We call the Okavango as wonderfully distinct because it's a mix of an MPV, MPV space uh, or MPV's interior and then the SUV um, styling. 
The Urban Plus also comes with a 1.5 liter turbo engine, the room interior with three rows of seats fit for adults, 19 seat configurations, 42 storage nooks and compartments, double layer console, and the triple zone air conditioning system equipped with CN95 filter. So, what additions in the new Okavango variant make it deserve the Plus designation? When you're asking about the changes for the Urban Plus, well, it's the standard Urban, but we just added three noted features, which is one is the panoramic sunroof, which has been being asked by some of our clients when they purchase the Okavang. They're looking for the sunroof talaga. And then the 12.3 instrument panel gauge, because on the Urban variant, it's just a 3.5 gauge, but now it's full digital and it has three modes, the Comfort, Sport, and Eco. And then the ADB, lastly, the ADB Matrix headlights, wherein it's an adaptive drive beam uh, LED light, wherein it follows or it changes depending on the situation you are in when driving. The Oka Vango also has the mild hybrid engine that is now catching the attention of local buyers looking for fuel savings and better emission levels while providing good power when needed. There are three special ways with which the Oka Vango engine works. The three main features of the 48 volt EMS is one is the stop start, wherein if you're in traffic or in idle, the engine will shut down. The smart cruise, wherein if you're on a highway, freewheeling, the engine will shut down, making your ride just cruising. And then the full boost, wherein the battery, you uh, extra power, can overtake with confidence. Geely has an open invitation for people to check out their vehicles. We invite everyone to visit our Facebook page, Genie Philippines, and our website, genieph.com, so that you can see the all-new Okavango Urban Plus, as well as the Ascara and the Cooler Apron. It's refreshing and encouraging that auto companies are now holding events in the real world as opposed to the virtual environment. And they are doing it responsibly with an abundance of caution. It makes us more optimistic for better times coming sooner than later. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Up next, we take a look at the Mercedes-Benz GLE 300D. GL designates it's an SUV and E means it's of the mid-size class.
Mercedes-Benz has more than a full range of SUVs to meet, a wide variety of needs, wants, and budgets. And a lot of these are thankfully available locally. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hey, today we'll be showing you how a unit chip is installed, how it is tuned, and what are the benefits of actually getting one installed in your car. And uh, here we have a 2017 Toyota Vios with the latest dual VVTi engine that already has an intake and a header. So we're gonna be installing Unichip next on this car to get more power. In a nutshell, what Unichip is, it's a computer that goes on top of the stock ECU and we're able to program this to give different commands to the ECU that says, okay, give us more fuel, give us less fuel, give us more spark plug timing, give us less spark plug timing, and among other things. More advanced features are we could use this to control additional injectors to supply a turbocharger, injector controllers for diesel engines, nitrous control, and sometimes also map switching. We can have up to five different maps for this one, such as if you want valet mode, total shutdown mode, immobilizer mode, and all of that. And this is where Unichip is installed. It's going to be installed very, very near the car's ECU, which in this case for the Vios, it's hidden behind the glove compartment. So it's eight wires to install. On most other cars nowadays, the computer box is usually found in the engine bay. Like if you have a Civic, you have a Jazz, you have a Focus. All the computer boxes are now found inside the engine and that's where Unichip will also be installed. So the way that we install it is we have to cut and splice a few wires. It's normally about eight. Those are power, ground, uh, throttle position, crank position, mass airflow sensor, among other things. So every joint we actually solder and then we shrink wrap and we tape over. So rest assured that nothing will get shorted, nor will it catch fire. That simply does not happen. This is a Unichip wiring diagram, only we have access to it, the official Unichip installer for the Philippines, which is us in Speed Lab. In the Unichip database, there are over a thousand cars that have diagrams for it. It ranges from something as old as a 1996 Corolla 4AFA engine to the latest Ranger Raptor, which we're going to be available in a few months. So it's basically eight wires here. These are the eight wires that connect to the Unichip, then these eight wires connect to the wiring harness of the ECU. It's, by the way, just the wiring harness, not the ECU itself. We don't open this up, we don't touch this, so that remains as is. A little bit of history about Unichip. This has been around actually for the better part of 25 years. The guy who invented it, Peter De Vert, is Dutch. He currently lives in South Africa. That's where he produces it. I think he gets a special government grant from the South African government for that one. And then it's actually exported all over the world. Uh, you can check it out on the internet, you can check out all the reviews, it's there. It's Unichip because it really is universal. We can use it for pretty much anything with an ECU. Gas, diesel, Chinese, European, American, Japanese, Korean cars. As long as it's an ECU, most likely we can install Unichip on it. So there are still certain cars like this Toyota Vios. You cannot remap the ECU. You cannot change the settings inside the ECU. So your only option for tuning is with the Unichip. All right, now uh, the Unichip is now connected to the ECU. For this particular car, we're using the Unichip Q4, which has an additional four wires to control the throttle because all cars now have electronic throttle. Uh, what this basically does is it equalizes the throttle opening because with all cars nowadays what happens is you step on the pedal this fast the throttle butterfly opens this fast that's the delay that everybody is complaining about with all modern cars you step on it like this it goes like this so what the unit chip does with the throttle control is it makes it one is to one you step on it fast it opens fast also so resulting in a mas malakas sumay bat na koche so right now, it's connected to the ECU, everything's working, the car's running, the engine is running, uh, it revs fine, there are no check engine lights whatsoever, so that means that the installation is done correctly and everything is working. Uh, with every unit chip installed, we actually put in a unique starting program depending on what the ECU is. 
Uh, in the Unichip database, there are over 100 starting programs for 100 different cars and 100 different vehicle models and makes and engines, actually. So, after this one, we're going to be putting the car on the dyno and we're going to be tuning it there to see what the final horsepower is. Uh, horsepower and torque, actually. So, stay tuned for that one. We're going to be putting it on now. Okay, we're done with the tuning of the Vios here with the Unichip and this is the results. This red line here is the baseline power. This already has our colder intake and our headers. So it's about 91 horses, which is actually pretty good for a 1.3 car. For reference, 90 horses or so is the territory of about 1.5 cars like the Jazz and the 1.5 Vios. This blue line here is after tuning with the Unichip. So at peak power, we're at 100 horses, so it's almost 10 horses more at 6,000 RPM. But the biggest gain here is actually, if you look at the torque graph on this side, at the initial step, there's about 6 foot-pounds here. This is even bigger, it's about 8 foot-pounds. Then this dip here is another 8 foot-pounds. So, and this is at the very critical 1,800 to 3,500 area where most of your overtaking happens. So the end result is a faster car, more powerful, a lot more responsive, and drive normally. Given this, you should see about 8 to 10 percent better mileage. So that's basically the whole unit chip install and tuning process as from start to finish, it took us about three hours total from wiring up the car to putting it on the dyno to tuning it to getting out of the dyno. So it's probably less than half a day. And, and you walk away with 10 horses on a 1.3 Vios. For other cars, say bigger engines like a 1.8 Civic, it's anywhere from 12 to 15 horses more. For turbo diesels, we actually get 40, sometimes 50 horses more. The best part is, when you sell the car, you can actually take the unit chip out, install it in whatever next car that you're going to purchase, be a gasoline car, diesel car, any brand, as long as it has an ECU, your unit chip can be installed in that and can be tuned again, reused, make more power for your new car. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.